So, Anjira, where do you see yourself in five or ten years? I mean, you've come a long way. You've studied a lot. Are you? Do you see yourself in the same spot, and just continually getting better, or do you have a, some kind of plan to? Well, I see myself in the same spot, just okay. getting better. Uh, the only thing that I think I would really like to introduce to people is yoga therapy. Okay. Uh, yoga therapy is not very well known, and people don't know that they can use yoga to help heal whatever is ailing them. Mm. Uh, yoga therapy is very new in the world. I mean, we've been doing it, but people don't know much about it. And that's what I really want to introduce people and tell them, look, you know, we can work one-on-one -on -one with yoga mm -hmm. and help whatever is going on in your body. For long-term uh, comfort, for long-term, you know, chronic, if someone has chronic pain, how can you, we deal with that chronic pain using yoga therapy? you know, instead of running for medication. Is yoga therapy relatively new, and is it uh, new to North America, or does it exist in the East as well? It does exist in India a lot, a lot. And the, the I think what made us lose that uh, part of the yoga world here in the Western world is that yoga here in the Western world is taught in classes, in huge group, in a yes. gym setting. Yeah. So when you see people going for a yoga class in a gym, the teacher doesn't know who is showing up. Mm -hmm. They really don't mm -hmm. know. So they get whoever they're getting. Yeah. And so they're not able to deal, they, they don't know what anybody there is dealing with. But when you have um, a kind of an Eastern setting, yoga is taught on a, in a very small group, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, and the, the, you grow with your teacher. So the teacher knows you, knows your weaknesses, knows your strengths, and can help you deal with whatever you're dealing with mm -hmm. using yoga. Because they know you, they know your body, they know what works for you. And, and so the, I find that that's, that's something that we need to start thinking about, of, about more here in the Western world. Now we do have, um, there's a big organization which is called the International Yoga Associ uh, International Association of Yoga Therapists, mm -hmm. which is really now gaining momentum, and it's trying to bring together all the yoga therapists wow. because that's a different title. It's yoga therapy and bringing together all the yoga therapists who are working with people even in hospital settings. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Are, it's being offered in the hospital settings yes. right now. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's offered in hospital mm -hmm. settings, and it's. It's now even a course in university to train as a yoga therapist. Mm. Excellent. So I'm hoping that that can gain momentum and I'm hoping to really introduce more people to yoga therapy. Okay. That's Excellent. why I see myself in five years. Excellent. <laughs> then you, uh, you might already be uh, aware of, I don't know if you're already involved with the MISTI, the Montreal Inter International um, therapeutic yoga, therapeutic yoga, yoga conference, yes, conference, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's it, uh, held here in Montreal, yes, yes, yes. yeah, okay. with some of the best known yoga therapy teachers. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, my next question is something totally unrelated, but always related, inevitably, <laughs> in some way, <laughs> and that is about uh, something really enormous and fabulous that you've done uh, about 13 years ago. Um, I, from the story that I know anyway, that uh, I read is that you woke up one morning and your husband asked you, so what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want to do with yourself? And you answered, well, I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and despite all of the, you know, uh, your friend's concerns and, and ideas or thoughts about how, okay, maybe this is a little, you know, above or out of your, out of your league or you're not ready because it's a huge feat. And, um, despite all of that, you trained, you found a cause that was bringing a group of people to a climb um, Mount Kilimanjaro for, it was for, um, for the cause was AIDS, but it was, a build, was it building a center? Or? We were building a, a medical center for treating pregnant women who okay. had HIV so that, I don't know if you know, but now in the Western world here in North America, very few children are born with AIDS, even if they're their mother may be HIV okay. positive because there's ways you can treat them with drugs mm. so that the infant doesn't have wow. AIDS, which really reduces the number of AIDS cases 
uh, because the child is born HIV free. Yeah. Right. But in Africa and in the third world countries, that doesn't exist. It's very expensive to get those medications. And so we were trying to get a center that could be able to treat pregnant women who had HIV uh, so that there's a chance that their infant is born without uh, the, the disease. Right. And we brought together 13 people, 13 Montrealers, and we collected money. And we were helped a lot by Health Partners Canada, which is a group of pharmaceutical companies that if you do have a, a cause that you want to work with to take medication somewhere, they can work with you to be able to help you take medication. As long as you have a doctor in the team, which we had, we had two doctors in the team, they can help you take medication to a worthwhile cause. So we did that. And you raised, from what I saw on your website, a very impressive we amount. We raised <laughs> an impressive amount in uh, in kind of in medication. I don't even remember how much we raised, but in goods and help to mm -hmm. the the people there, we raised about two hundred and fifty thousand. Amazing! Wow. A group of thirteen. We're talking about a group, a group of thirteen, 13 people. people. Um, and this all came about in a very short, very yeah, in short about time one too, year. Right? In about one year. One year. Okay, and I'm sure what people really want to know about, and what what for me, I, I was so transfixed. I mean, if anyone is curious and and is you know uh, really intrigued by the story, definitely go to Wanjira's uh, website, and we will well, actually we can plug it in right away. Do you want to yes. just let people? So know? so my website is www.wanjira.com. My name. And so on your website, you have a page where, um, under the bio where you talk about your adventures. And, and this is where I read about this experience. Mm -hmm. And I was completely, completely absorbed in the story. And it was so, I was inspired just reading. And uh, I can only imagine what it was like for you going through. So you, it, on, on your website, you actually describe in detail, day by day, um, <laughs> what were some of the challenges and what, were, what was it like to be climbing? Uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. So, um, if you want to just maybe briefly talk about that, and, and then I actually have a little more, one more thing I want to ask about okay. that. All right. So, as as I said on my website, uh, on the blog that I had there, it was really life changing because um, we didn't know that we could make it. Nobody, none of us had ever done anything like that. Uh, Thirteen of us, but it was every day a different challenge. Now, Kilimanjaro is not. We were not scaling with ropes and anything like that. It's a long hike, uh, walking about eight hours a day. Uh, and you go through different ecosystems. So you kind of start off in the tropics, and before you know, you're in the rainforest, and then you've wow. gone into another arid desert kind of uh, atmosphere. Uh, and it, it was just long. It was very long. Mm -hmm. And I would say that at the end, it was really a mental challenge. It was about putting one foot in front of the other and uh, until we finished. And uh, five of us managed to get to the top uh, with a very, very good group. The group that, uh, the, the guides that took us there were very good, very caring. They took care of everything. Mm -hmm. you, would ne you would not think that you were on a mountain. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, just reading about some of the meals that you the had. The meals were great. <laughs> Which, I mean, when you think about it, it's your fuel. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. pretty substantial. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, but they, they really are good, the, the guys that took us there. They did a wonderful job. So mm -hmm. physically it was challenging, but it was also good knowing that you were doing something for a worthy cause. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And is that something that you kept... When you, you know, at your most challenged times, when you thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't be continuing, maybe I'm done, is that something that actually helped you? Push you forward? Yes, it did know? help us. It helped push us forward because you knew we were doing this for the kids. We kept on saying we're doing this for the kids. We're doing this for the mothers. So let's just push on. Let's just push on. And the guides are so encouraging. Mm. They really do encourage you to keep moving. Yeah, just That's keep amazing. moving, putting one foot in front of the other. So with this kind of, I mean, this is not the kind of experience. It's a once in a lifetime experience and can be on some people's bucket lists. But I, I can only imagine how you come out of there transformed, yeah. completely transformed. So I'm curious, 13 years later, is there still an imprint left from that kind of experience? And how does it, how does it mold or shape who you are today? Do you still think back on that from time to time? And, you know, what, how, how does it affect you today, you know, so much, so many years later? I still think about it, and one of the things that we did while we were there is we visited an orphanage, uh, a home that had been created, part of the people who created this home was the owner of the company that guides tours on Kilimanjaro. And all the orphans in this home are 
children who've left been who've left been behind who've been orphaned by AIDS. Mm -hmm. So they are children who uh, are either walking the streets because they can't go to school because they have no parents to take care of them, and this home was started. I am still helping that home. Oh, wow. So Amazing. I do a yoga session the third Sunday of every month. It's a restorative yoga session and all the money goes to the home to help the kids. So to me, I, I normally think that if we're going to help, then we need to continue. Uh, there's, there's so many causes that are coming up now and, I, and you kind of sense that uh, there's, a, I think what I like to call a donor fatigue, People get mm -hmm. tired, yeah, like, right. okay, who We're do I give, everywhere. who do yes. I give, uh, everybody needs my help, mm -hmm. I'd like to help, but who do I give? And I always say, pick one charity and stick to it. You know, at least you're helping somebody. And so mm -hmm. I still help that home. And um, that left a great imprint in me. It really feels good to be doing it. That sounds awesome. So you said it was the third the third Sunday, Sunday of every month. Okay. And we do a yoga session here in the morning, seven a.m. to eight thirty a.m. Mm -hmm. It's a restorative yoga, so it's supported, so anybody can do it, even people who've never done yoga. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all the money raised goes to helping uh, Amani kids. The name is Amani. Amani okay. kids in Washington, Tanzania. Um, I actually, I think you mentioned um, you, you mentioned a little anecdote or story about that on your website, and, yes. and I have to say it really touched me. Um, you talked about seeing, witnessing a six-year-old uh, girl, I think it was, who was doing her own laundry, her own laundry. and that they, they're, they're really self-sufficient, that at least the kids who are living in this orphanage. Yeah. And um, I, mean, I have a seven-year-old, and just reading that, and I thought, oh, you know, we, when, we're, when we practice gratitude in our day-to-day -day life, um, yes, we're always grateful for what we have. We're grateful for our home, for you know, the, the, the place we live in, our friends and family. But reading something like that, it really brings us back to the, the, the heart of it. That, that you know, we can be there. Yes, there, that we're grateful to have a roof uh, on our, our home. And but as a parent, you know, sometimes I think, am I doing a good job? And oh, my kids, and oh, he's not happy, and he's not doing his laundry. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not doing his laundry. And I'm, I'm saying it in a very light, you know, silly yeah, way. But uh, it just brings me back to. Mm -hmm. How our kids are so blessed. You know, blessed. That, that we are blessed, blessed but you know, oh, and, and, and reminding ourselves that coming yeah. back to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how blessed we really are. Yeah. And maybe yeah. even for parents showing something like that to their kids. Right. To, so that kids can grow up knowing that not every child is that lucky. Mm -hmm. And so right. as they grow, they begin to appreciate what they really have. Absolutely. Uh, because we want to bring up a generation of conscious people, people who really know that, oh, you know what? The other side of the world may not be living like I do. And mm -hmm. it keeps reminding our kids that, oh yeah, there is a place in me where I can, where there is gratitude because my parents are doing this for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and I think we start small. We should start small. Now that home has really grown big and we've seen some of the children who started like that six-year-old uh, they've gone on to great careers, they are, they've gone to school, they are, they're doing so well. Right. It's yes. wonderful to see their home. The kids are really doing well. Right, so to not look at it as something that's dis disabling in any way necessarily mm -hmm. either, but I mean we appreciate what we have yes. and also appreciate it so much more when we can take you know, very little and transform it and into transform something it. Yeah. Uh, really useful and well I say useful but I mean to have purpose and to, to leave our mark mm -hmm. regardless of where where we come from yeah, yeah. yeah. oh that's amazing yes. raised over 250,000 yes and was this from private donors or uh, institutions? We, we had, no, it was people, private wow. donors. It was That's people amazing. donating money. Uh, we, I think the only corporate donations that we had were for our clothes, the clothes we were wearing. Mm -hmm. uh, we got t-shirts, we got boots from Merrill. Mm -hmm. in Merrill. <laughs> Merrill gave us boots. Um, uh, the rest was private donors, people just donating their money. and. Uh, it, it was it Absolutely. was just wonderful and the thing is that the people all 13 people agreed to pay their own way mm. so that mm. all the money they raised every cent of it went into the charity so that we could not we didn't want to use any of that money it all went into the charity so you know it's an uh, 13 amazing people who agreed to pay their own way mm. yeah 
Awesome. Well, Jira, I want to thank you so much. You're an inspiration. Thank you.